One of the most central relationships in the world economy today is between the United States and the People's Republic of China. It is a relationship fraught with tension, contradiction, and it is fundamentally bizarre. On the one hand, these are, in some sense, enemies people who represent or countries that represent very different ways of organizing society. The leading capitalist country of the world, the United States, and the leading communist country in the world, the People's Republic of China. And yet, they're drawn together, they're tied in a kind of relationship that in other fields would be called codependency, full of all kinds of trials, tribulations, and dangers that we need to be aware of. Let's begin as follows to see this. The United States is the largest debtor country in the world. That is, the United States owes other countries more money than any other country in the world. But that's only the half of it. The largest creditor of the United States, the country that has lent the most to the country that's most in debt, is the People's Republic of China. They own somewhere between one and a half and two trillion dollars worth of the debt of the United States. The world's largest communist country is the creditor to the world's largest capitalist country. Makes you want to think, what's going on? In fact, the relationship now has been codependent for a long time. Thirty odd years ago, China, a poor, backward, underdeveloped country, made the decision to industrialize quickly and figured out that the best way it could see to do it was to become a productive powerhouse, producing the goods and services consumed by the American working class. Why the American working class? Because it was the biggest, richest working class around. And if you're going to produce for a market and you want to grow, picking the United States was both daring but also sensible. And they went to work and they asked themselves, how are we going to do this? They didn't have the capital, the money with which to begin. They didn't have the technology. But they did have something, a government determined to do it and a mass of pretty well-educated people, industrious, willing to learn and willing to work at unbelievably low wages. So the Chinese invited the United States and other countries to bring capital into China. They would create very favorable conditions for that capital to be invested. Into producing what? Into producing the same goods these companies were producing in their home country, like the United States above all. So it said to American companies, here's a deal you can't refuse. You're selling $5 worth of something that it cost you $3 to make. Come to China, it'll only cost you $1 to make. And you can still sell it in the United States for 5 and you'll pick up the difference. In short, you'll make much more profit coming to China than you ever can or will in your own country. To make a long story short, it worked. Over the last 30 years, huge numbers of American corporations shifted production out of the United States and into China, and other companies from other countries did likewise. Over the last 30 years, China was able to find industrial jobs for hundreds of millions of their people who left agriculture, who left the rural areas, came to the cities, came to the industries, and had a life, better income, better job than the poverty of the rural countryside in China would ever have allowed them to have. The Chinese leadership was industrializing their country in partnership with the United States. The American companies that drove this process made money in the way I described. But for the mass of American people, there was another benefit. You could get your hands on these much cheaper Chinese produced goods, clothing, small appliances, furniture, you name it. The only problem for the Chinese was how to distribute it. How could you get it from being produced cheaply in China into the homes of average Americans? Enter Walmart. Cut a deal with the Chinese years ago. Walmart would distribute what China produced. And so China found a partner, 
a company that would distribute inexpensive Chinese competitors for American produced goods, often produced by American companies in China. Walmart made a fortune. Over the last 30 years, China industrialized and Walmart became the largest private employer corporation in the United States, a partnership that profited them magnificently, both of them. But here we are, 2011, and what have we got? The Chinese produce cheap wage goods for American workers. If anything were to happen to interrupt that flow, to make those kinds of goods with the Chinese produced better and cheaper than anywhere else, if those became impossible for American workers, we would have an economic crisis here because those workers accustomed to that standard of living would now demand to buy those goods someplace else. The price would be higher and those workers would have to get higher wages, which would be a real problem in this country for corporations to pay. So we need the Chinese. But here's another way. The Chinese took all the money that they got from Americans buying all those Chinese goods and they did something very smart. They lent the money back into the United States. They bought treasury bonds. They flooded the American banking system with those dollars that we paid the Chinese to get the goods. In a peculiar way, it was like the Marshall Plan after World War II, when the United States lent money to Europe, which the Europeans used to buy goods from America. Today, the Chinese lend us the money we use to buy the goods from China, which gives them the money to lend us, and so it goes. They are our creditors. They are the producers of what we consume. We need them. But they also need us. Without the Americans to buy, the Chinese economy couldn't have industrialized and couldn't succeed today. So we need each other, we depend on each other, we don't trust each other. An extraordinarily precarious, dangerous situation. Produced by the desire of China to industrialize and the vulnerability of America to the profit-making decisions of its corporate sector. Something to think about in 2011.